हेलो एवरीवन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर ऋचा अग्रवाल असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर काइट ग्रुप ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूशन टुडे आई एम विद माय वीडियो ऑन मल्टीपल इंटीग्रल पार्ट वन इन विच वील डील विद मल्टीपल इंटीग्रेशन मल वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज मल्टीपल इंटीग्रल एंड वॉट इज डबल इंटीग्रल दैट वील कवर इन दिस वीडियो एंड लेटर ऑन इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो आई विल कवर वॉट इज ट्रिपल इंटीग्रेशन so what exactly is multiple integration when we are integrating multiply times we need to multiply integrate some function then such integral is known as multiple integral and in our syllabus have we deal with double integral and triple integral if the function is of uh, two variable then we deal with uh, double integral and when the function is of uh, three variable then we'll have to deal with triple integral and so on what are the application we are going to discuss in this video the application of double and triple integral is covers the area volume mass centroid how to find all these things through double integral and triple integral that all depends on double integral and triple integral these are the major applications of double and triple integration how to find moment of inertia how to find the average value of a function distance velocity acceleration kinetic energy improper integral arc length etc so in numerous uh, application part is there for multiple integral especially double and triple integration so first of all we will discuss about double integration double integration basically we use for two variable function if we have a two variable function single valued uh, bounded function fxy having uh, two independent variables x and y and closed by some reason r covering the area a then double integration over the reason r of fxy with respect to a that area that area also can be written as dx dy then it is known as double integration and more clearly out of this box we can also express this like double integration over the region r of function fxy with respect to x and y and the order may be reversible also we may first integrate with respect to y and then integrate with respect to x but it depends on the uh, region we are taking our i should say the limits x and y will be bounded in all depends on that that we'll discuss now how to evaluate double integral when the function given is in cartesian form cartesian polar form are there in syllabus so first we are discussing about what uh, how to find the double integral of cartesian functions so there are four three cases in which we will uh, discuss the evaluation part as i told you that is our choice with respect to which variable we want to integrate the first but sometimes we will be bounded that uh, with respect to which variable we will have to deal the integration the first what are that situations that i am going to tell you first of all make up your mind that we are we will have in these questions we will have four limits that is four function one for lower and upper limit two functions for uh, lower and upper limit of x variable and two functions for lower and upper limit of y variable so overall we will have four curves whether it may be a constant curve whether it, it may be a functional curve now i must tell you integration we perform the first always with respect to that variable which is having the variable limits okay you are least in the nature to see the variable limits till now you are always in the nature to see the variable constant limits most of the time sometimes you have used a to b limits and all but here we will have the functional limit like x is equals to y square x is equals to 4 ay and so on so in first case we will discuss when x1 and x2 are functions of y and y1 and y2 are constant so uh, correlated with the diagram uh, if we are having x1 is equals to 5 1y and x2 is equals to 5 2y we will have the curvature terms parallel to y axis so you can see here the curves are mentioned and i have uh, marked the arrow over there to represent which curves are x1 is equals to 5 1y and x2 is equals to 
phi to y taking this in our mind also take this uh, in this case that the rest of the limits for y will be constant so you can see the constant lines y is equals to y1 and y is equals to y2 parallel to x axis and through these four curves the whole region bounded uh, is uh, denoted by capital r over here okay so the integral formula in box i have mentioned double integration over the region r fx y dx dy is equals to integration y1 to y2 and now you can see we are first integrating with respect to x over the limit phi 1 y phi 2 y and then over the region uh, integration with respect to y over the region y1 to y2 and what is the role of this strip i have mentioned in this diagram pq this pq strip slightly cover the whole region when it moves from y1 to y2 in between sandwiched in these two curves i have mentioned in this picture so this is the role of this strip to cover the whole area bounded by the given region now we should see the second case in second case we will discuss the function if y1 and y2 are having the variable limits in terms of x and x1 and x2 are having the constant limits so now in the diagram you can see the variable limits of y1 and y2 we have taken parallel to x axis not parallel but in direction of x axis and x is equals to x1 and x is equals to x2 being the constant lines we are taking them parallel to y axis so the double integral over the region r fx y dx dy will equals to uh, in this manner that we will have to first integrate with respect to y over the limit phi 1 to phi 2 and then over the uh, with respect to the variable x over the limit x1 x2 and here again the strip is playing the same role this is varying from x1 to x2 sandwiched between the curves phi1 and phi2 covering whole the area bounded by the region capital r now the last kind of integral we will see in this exercise will be uh, when x1 x2 y1 y2 are constants when x1 x2 y1 y2 all are constant then we will have to just uh, notice about just be careful about that what are the limits associated with x that is x1 and x2 and what are the limit that are associated with y that is y1 and y2 we can't uh, separate the limits of that function with respect to that variable but we can exchange the order without any problem so in this case we can integrate it in two ways as i have shown in these brackets in these boxes uh, first in first box we can see that we are integrating with respect to y the first and then x and in the second box we are integrating with respect to x the first but under the limits x and x2 this time x1 and x2 are associated with dx so uh, first integration will be done in with respect to x and the first limit for them will be put like x1 and x2 on the other hand you can see pre in the previous bracket that uh, when we were integrating with respect to y we were using the limits y1 and y2 so uh, come on the diagram in which this is a rectangular shape as all the lines four lines are there for uh, y1 y2 parallel to x axis and x1 x2 parallel to y axis so now we can choose any of the strip not both the strips we need to choose here we are mentioning these strips for both the results i have mentioned over there so if we are uh, taking the strip pq parallel to x axis then we will be bounded to integrate with respect to x the first and then with respect to y and if we are taking the strip parallel to y axis p dash q dash then we are bounded to integrate with respect to y the first that it is parallel to y axis so this is all about that now come one one example also one very important note i have mentioned here that you too should remember always that we always perform the integration first with respect to that variable which has the variable limits 
and secondary we will deal with that uh, integration with respect to that variable which will having the constant limits so this is all about you will have to always remember during you are evaluating the double and triple integrals now come on one example a very interesting example in which all the limits are constant and together with that one more privilege we are here having here that both the limits are same to same so we will not to be bother about which one limit is for x which one limit is for y now taking integration with respect to x the first now we are free we are having both the choices we can integrate with respect to y also the first here we are free to choose any order but we are choosing here with respect to x the first the when um we will integrate uh, uh, one upon under root uh, one minus x square one minus y square so under root uh, one minus y square will be like a constant so out of this integration we can take it common out of it and one upon under root one minus x square will result after integration sine inverse x over the limit by uh, zero to one and putting the limits will have pi by two minus zero sin inverse 1 minus sin inverse 0 that is pi by 2 minus 0 so pi by 2 will be the result over here now pi by 2 can be out of this integration being a constant term and integration of 1 upon under root 1 minus y square with respect to y over the limit 0 to 1 we will have again sin inverse 1 minus sin inverse 0 so again the result will be Mm, pi by 2 pi by 2 was previously over there and when more pi by 2 is there so combinedly it will be pi square by 4 so this is a very interesting example now take one example yes <clears throat> now taking one example in which we are uh, having number of strips in the same diagram in parallel to the same axis so what is the condition is special over there in this question we should notice this thing i'm reading the question the question is let d be the region in the first quadrant point to be noted in the first quadrant that is a positive quadrant uh, the whole region lying in this first quadrant bounded by the curves x y is equals to 16 hyperbola x is equals to y a line y is equals to 0 line on x axis and x is equals to 8 a line parallel to y axis on the distance of x is equals to 8 so you are supposed to sketch the region of integration also so the region uh, sketch of the region we have already uh, mentioned here and you can see in this white box here you can see i have drawn the first quadrant only as the question in the question it was mentioned that whole the region lies in first quadrant x y is equals to 16 is the hyperbola in this shape you can see and the line x is equals to y now these both are intersecting on a point and i have mentioned there that the point is a 4 comma 4 how to find this point putting x is equals to y in x y is equals to 16 we will have x square if we are replacing y by x then x into x will give you x square x square is equals to 16 that is x is equals to 4 x is equals to 4 we should put in y is equals to x y and x are equal so y will also be 4 solving both the equation that the values must satisfy both the equations will have the intersection point that is 4 comma 4 also in my result i have mentioned the whole process that i will show you now drawing um, x is equals to 8 we'll have to find the intersection point with the hyperbola putting x is equals to 8 y is equals to 2 so the intersection point on uh, this hyperbola will be at b point 8 comma 2 now in this question we have to integrate with respect to the function within the region bounded by all these four curves first we'll have to draw the picture as i am already explained to you and uh, solving the equations what are the uh, intersection points that also we have discussed now now come on the solution 
Drawing the curves, we get the intersection area as shown in the figure. Now we will be able to decide with respect to which variable we should first perform the integral. And in order to that, we have to uh, construct the strip also. Now watch it over here. If we are taking the strip parallel to y axis, you can see when a strip is going from 0 to 4. I'm talking about x is equals to 0 to x is equals to 4 then uh, the shape is changing under this integration the curve is bounded between y is equals to 0 to y is equals to x but rapidly from here instantly the curve is changing on upper limit lower limit is still as y is equals to 0 but from this dotted line the upper limit is going to change so the upper limit is now depending on the parabola that is y is equals to 16 by 4 so now you, i must recall you up uh, you already have uh, learned about the integration in two reasons integration by parts so we will apply integration by parts over here as the strip in one region is going up to only a is four four point and the second part is covering the whole region up to x is equals to 8 okay so here we will break our integration x square dx dy in two parts you can see the first part we are taking from y is equals to 0 to y is equals to x over the limit x is equals to 0 to 4 and second integration we are getting bounded between y is equals to 0 to y is equals to 16 by x and x is equals to 4 to 8 now this is just a simple kind of question but the variable limits are there so we will first perform to uh, first perform the integral with respect to that variable which is having the variable limits in both the terms i can see that the integration with respect to y is our priority as y is having the variable limits in both the parts so integrating with respect to y simple integration is there and putting the limits of y uh, we will completely have our result in terms of y and putting our limits we will get the result Now come on the evaluation of double integral in polar coordinates. In polar coordinates we know very well x is uh, used to be equals to r cos theta and y is equals to r sin theta. So converting the term into polar form it can also be sometimes useful when integration is going to be tough. Then we can convert it into the polar form and sometimes we are unable to solve through polar form then you may convert that into Cartesian form using the formula x is equals to r cos theta and y is equals to r sin theta. Take one example. Evaluate integration r cube dr d theta. Here we have two variables radial vector r and angular motion theta. I have mentioned the diagram in x y coordinates to uh, make you familiar with it otherwise here there is no x and y axis but there is a uh, initial line in place of x axis and half ray in place of y axis so just to correlate I have mentioned x and y axis that you can remove from your mind in Cartesian form you use x y plane and in polar form we use polar plane in which radial vector revolves around the figure from some angle to some angle that is denoted by theta the reason of integration r is shown shaded actually um, in this question the region is bounded by two circles r is equals to 2 cos theta r is equals to 4 cos theta so uh, through the tracing curve tracing you must have learned in unit number one um, unit number two sorry that uh, r is equals to 2 cos theta is a circle having the center at 1 comma 0 and r is equals to 4 cos theta also is a circle having the center at 2 comma 0 so drawing both the circles and getting the sandwiched area we are having with our region capital R bounded by uh, bounding the area capital A R is revolving R is a radial strip 
now this strip is like that and that will revolve like this angular momentum so a strip is just going from uh, lower circle to upper circle that is 2 cos theta to 4 cos theta and theta is varying from minus pi by 2 to whole pi by 2 to cover the whole area now double integration of r cube dr d theta we will have to convert and in order that uh, the function given to you was r cube already so we don't need to change it out and um, r cube now will be integrating with respect to r the first because r is having the variable limits 2 cos theta to 4 cos theta and later on with respect to theta having the constant limits by minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 here we are with r cube r cube integration of r cube is r is to the power 4 by 4 over the limit 2 cos theta to 4 cos theta now resolving it uh, putting all the values we will have uh, 1 by 4 256 cos raised to the power 4 theta minus 16 cos raised to the power 4 theta with respect to theta now we are left to integrate it uh, is equals to solving which we are getting uh, 60 integration over the region uh, with the limits minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 cos raised to the power 4 theta d theta solving which simplifying which as you can see i must remind you that uh, for even functions for even functions we have the um, limit minus a to a is twice of 0 to a okay and cos is the even function having the fourth power is also the even function when we are having the even function we can convert minus a to a like minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 into twice of 0 to pi by 2 and a reference formula i must tell you in the screen box highlighted this is a reference formula in case we are having 0 to pi by 2 limit for sine raised to the power n theta or cos raised to the power n theta if n is even then the upper one formula we will use here n is even so we are using the upper one formula n is equals to 4 so putting 4 4 minus 1 upon 4 that is 3 by 4 4 minus 3 by 4 minus 2 that is 1 upon 2 and uh, after 1 upon 2 you will just stop creating uh, the next terms uh, 1 upon 2 is the last term you can see in the screen bracket and thereafter we will multiply it by pi by 2 as per this formula but if n is odd then we will use the next formula i mentioned there without pi by 2 so in this manner calculating the whole term we will have 45 by 2 pi so this is all about uh, double integration in cartesian form as well as polar form thank you so much all of you to watch uh, triple integration we will continue in part 2 thank you so much Hello friends, today I am going to discuss about extraction, isolation and the chemistry of digoxin. But before watching this video, I will strongly recommend you to watch my previous videos on chemistry of natural products. Link up those videos or link up the playlist is given in the description. Now coming to the introduction of digoxin. So this will be the contents which contains introduction, isolation, chemistry, phytochemical taste and the uses. So coming to the introduction, so digoxin is isolated from digitalis purpurea leaves which is belonging to the family Scrofulariaceae. This is the structure of digoxin and this is the IUPAC nomenclature of digoxin. So in the structure you can see that it contains mainly steroidal ring which is a basic nucleus and apart from this it contains a 5 membered lactone ring. Now coming to the chemistry of digoxin. So here molecular formula for digoxin is C41, H64O14 and the molecular weight will be 780. So here we will multiply 41 into 12 because molecular weight of carbon is 12. 
here uh, 64 into 1 because molecular weight of hydrogen is 1 and 14 into 16. So, after multiplying all these 3, we will add all the results. After that, we will get the result of 780 which will be the molecular weight of digoxin and uh, as you know this is the structure of digoxin here you can see that this is the basic nucleus which is a sterol ring or sterol nucleus and uh, here at the 17th position one 5 membered electron ring is attached if you want to see the numbering of this structure then it will be like this this will be the first position then second, then third, then fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. In tenth position, one methyl group is attached that is CH3, eleventh, twelfth. In twelfth position, one OH group is attached, thirteen. In thirteen position, one CH3 group is attached, fourteen. In fourteen position, one OH hydroxyl group is present. 15, 16 and 17 and here you can see that in 17th position one lactone ring is present and uh, this will be the IUPAC nomenclature for this digoxin. So, this is the basic structure of the digoxin. This CH3 group will be named as 18th position and this will be named as 19th position. Thank you.